a high school student, Teo Asano, has been socially inept ever since his family died in a car crash. The only person he can properly interact with is his childhood friend, Matsumi Yozakura, the head of the world's strongest family of spies. Matsumi's eldest brother, Kaiyu Akira Yozakura, has been overprotective of her ever since he once rendered her severely injured. His love for Matsumi is lethal, and Teo is his next target. To survive, Teo must marry Matsumi and become a member of the Yazakura family. Thrown headfirst into chaos, Teo begins his journey to become a powerful spy in order to protect his wife and uncover the dark secrets of his past and the Yazakura family. The story begins on a rainy day when Teo's family, unfortunately, had an accident that left his parents and younger sister dead. During the funeral, Teo was afraid that he would lose the only precious thing left to him, which was his best friend, Matsumi. Matsumi said, don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. Those words somehow helped comfort Teo's wounded soul. No matter what, he still has to continue this life. During recess at school, his classmates invited Teo to join soccer, karaoke, and study groups. But Teo is too shy and always refuses people's invitations, even if they invite him ten times. Look at him, he's so nervous, he's blacked out. Answering them that first time must have wiped him out. You have to feel sorry for anyone who's that shy. The thing is, it's not like Teo's shy or anything. He's happy that they asked him to hang out, and it would be great to talk about stuff with them. Matsumi comes and asks you turn them down again. But they were nice enough to ask you. Teo said, who cares? Just leave me alone. Matsumi made him lunch. She knows he hasn't been eating because he's always working. She's got some of that salty tamagoyaki that he likes. She threatens him, if you leave your carrots again, you'll live to regret it. Make Teo obediently obey. The three boys felt very admired when Matsumi easily tamed Teo. They also feel very jealous when school idol Matsumi is very close to Teo. Matsumi laments that Teo is always alone. It worries her, thinking that he could spend the rest of his life like this. She advises that what you need to do is finally move on, or your parents will be sad. So that's why you need to rehab your communication skills. While she was feeding Teo, Vice Principal Harukawa appeared and took a bite from Matsumi's fork. He explains that his body cannot resist the scent of her tamagoyaki. Teo wondered where did Harukawa come from. Out of nowhere, Matsumi was quite angry because Harukawa always snacked on her food. Harukawa-sensei told Teo to come to his office after class ended, making Teo quite nervous. When class ended, the three boys said goodbye to Teo, but Teo was too tense to respond to them. Ever since that day, Teo's been afraid to connect with other people. Teo arrives at the vice principal's office to see Harukawa. Harukawa was sitting too close to Teo, making him even more nervous. Harukawa wanted to show him his collection, his secret shots of Matsumi collection. What a pervert. Teo knew Matsumi was a favorite of Mr. Harukawa's, but he didn't expect him to like Matsumi in this perverted way. He's a lost cause. This is pathetic. He guess he'd better report him. He showed Teo pictures of Matsumi when she was three years old. Teo wondered, why would a teacher like him have pictures like these? Harukawa said, you see, I've been watching over Matsumi from the shadows all this time. Since Matsumi is so gorgeous, to shield her from all the undesirables, I've been keeping an eye on her constantly, non-stop, without a break. That third-year kid, Tanaka, was pretty pesky yesterday, but when I graciously asked him to stay away from Matsumi, he gladly agreed to comply in the end. Teyo is panicking and thinks this dude. He's totally insane. He envies Teyo, getting those homemade lunches from Matsumi. He took out a knife and held it to Teyo's neck. Teyo can't make a sound. His legs are frozen, too. Matsumi's in danger, but he can't do anything. Harukawa said that he did all this for the sake of his beloved kid sister. This surprised Teo because Harukawa is a sister crazy guy. A girl appears and tells him to stop it right here. She threw a glare grenade and took Teo away. When Teo woke up, he saw Matsumi and several strangers. Matsumi is glad to see he's alright. Teo wondered who these very eccentric people were. Matsumi said, well, it's kind of a long story. But for now, let me introduce them to you. These are my siblings. This is my big sister, Futaba. And this is my big brother, Shinzo. This is big sis Shin, and Kengo, and Nano. And this is our guard dog, Goliath. As you can see, we're a family of spies. It was really tough, keeping my mouth shut about that for 10 plus years. Teo is still in shock and asks, what are you talking about? I can't proceed that like you'd say, we're a family of greengrocers. Matsumi explains that it's just that instead of eggplants and radishes, we deal in guns and intel. Isn't it kind of the same? Teo said that not at all. 
It's totally different. I know, I'm getting pranked. You're pranking me, right, Matsumi? Like, this gun is just a toy, right? He tried pulling the trigger and was shocked a second time. Shinzo said, unlike in books and movies, being a spy is just a common, ordinary job. Futaba said lately, there's been a surge in cheap public servant spies, so as freelancers, we can't compete, can we? Shin said, we'll be fine. I mean, we do lead the rankings on the review sites, with 4.8 stars. Kengo said that we've got big bro Kaiwa Kairo to boost our popularity. The undisputed number one male spy that female spies want to be targeted by. Teyo realized Harukawa was also a member of this family. The eldest son of the Yazakura family, Kaiwa Kairo. As a person, he's flawed, but in every other aspect, combat power, intelligence, he's the best spy in their family. Teo asked why would your brother target me? Futaba explains that we got a tip that someone was plotting to kill Matsumi. Well, we did get the intel from that moronic social media post. Kengo shows Teo their social networks. Not only that, they've got a ton of followers too. Futaba said, years ago, during a certain incident, Matsumi suffered a near-fatal injury because of Kaiwa Kairo. That white hair is a remnant of the stress from that accident. Ever since then, his sense of guilt has made Harukawa obsess over Matsumi to an abnormal degree. Harukawa's changed his name and job so he can surveil her, and he'll interfere with everything, from her daily life to her personal connections. He's turned into a Matsumi-protecting monster. Despite his hatred for Teo, he's always given Teo a pass as Matsumi's childhood friend. But now he has a reason to justify getting rid of Teo. Futaba is really sorry that her brother is such an idiot. Suddenly, the alarm sounded. Kaiwa Kairo had just returned to this house. He probably means to finish Teo off. They told Teo to calm down, they would take care of this. Every door leading to this room has been locked. And Shin said every trap they have on hand. There's no getting through to that guy. Alright, you guys, we're going to give that moron a beatdown. Shin says well, not that the odds are on our side. Even at 5 to 1, our win rate for past head-on clashes was a mere 30%. There's also a 42% chance of one of us using 6 months of recovery, and a 25% chance of the house burning down. Teo feels guilty because it all started because of him. Futaba says it's always been a family issue. Don't give it a second thought. There's just one way for you to survive this. You two need to get married. If you marry into our family, in accordance with our one rule, peace in the household. No killing among family members, your life, at least, can be preserved. You only have to exchange rings to marry a Yazakura. This cherry blossom ring is double banded. The moment you give half to your spouse, your marriage becomes official. Even that idiot isn't stupid enough to break such an ironclad rule. And I think it'll be a good chance for him to finally get over his sister fetish. Well, that's just what I personally hope. To protect you and to protect Matsumi. Not a bad idea, wouldn't you agree? Teyo thought about getting married and remembered that accident, causing him to panic. Matsumi said that she is not marrying Teyo. Teyo's lost his family. Even now, he can't talk to people or even sleep. He's still coming to terms with the loss of his family. No one knows better than Teyo what that pain is like, so casually telling him, join our family that would be too cruel. Futaba understood the problem and apologized to Teyo. So everyone will do as originally planned and fight Kaiwa Kairo. Suddenly Kaiwa Kairo appeared in the room without anyone noticing. Kaiwa Kairo asked Shinzo, you renovated the traps around the mansion, right? Well, evading them was a pain, so I destroyed them all. Futaba grabbed Kaiwa Kairo's tie and threw him hard. All right, time for a sibling fight. They all possess special powers like mutants. However, they still could not overwhelm Kaiwa Kairo. Kaiwa Kairo said that was pretty good teamwork, you know. But you left yourselves way too open after that one strike. Now, enough with the training. Just hand over that guy. Otherwise, I'm going to rip this house to shreds. Teo wondered what was in his hand. Futaba explains that his special weapon, Steel Spider. She told Matsumi, we're going to buy you some time, so you take that kid and run. Futaba was tied to the ceiling by him using Steel Spider. Kengo immediately fled with Matsumi and Teo. Shin activates several weapons. For a real gamer, fun means pulling out all the stops. Teo asks if the others are safe. Matsumi says remember what Big Sis Futaba said. We're not allowed to kill any family members, so it's all good. They hid Teo in a secret place. However, when Kaiwa Kairo walked in and saw Kengo and Matsumi there, Matsumi immediately rushed to attack Kaiwa Kairo, but was easily bound by him with Steel Spider. He complimented Kengo on how well he disguised himself. He told Matsumi to tell him where she hid Teo. Teo remembered Matsumi's advice. Listen up, Teo. Whatever happens, don't ever come out of there, all right. Matsumi tells Kaiwa Kairo to stop this nonsense. I'm telling you, Teo's not trying to kill me. 
You know all about it, too, don't you? About Teo's family. So please don't hurt Teo anymore. Kaio Akairo says all right, fine, Matsumi. I won't lay a hand on him anymore. And I'm not going to let you out of the house anymore. Out there, you'll attract the unsavory. And I'll have failed you like your big brother. From now on, I'm going to do much, much more to keep you safe, all right. It's dangerous, so you don't need to go outside. The internet is dangerous too, so no smartphone for you. I'm going to escape the world of everything that could put you in danger. School, your friends, fun, romance, I'll get rid of them all. I'll eliminate all that's unnecessary so you can have a safe, peaceful household. Aw, just imagining it makes my heart flutter. The day that I nearly lost you, I vowed to accept any kind of pain if only I could keep this child safe. I would give up my own life in order to protect you, my beloved. Now then, Matsumi, forget about that guy, and let's live in peace. Just as Matsumi was about to give up, Teo walked out. Teo guessed that this guy is probably just like him. He's afraid to lose what's precious to him, but making the precious person he wants to protect look like that. Teo just know that's wrong. He told Matsumi, let's do it. That method that your sister said would keep both of us safe. I'll be fine, because you promised me that you weren't going anywhere. She threw one of her rings to Teo. But Kaio Akairo prevented Teo from catching it. However, Teo injured himself so he could grab the ring. Hey, Matsumi, thanks for always protecting. The hopeless wreck that I am. That's why, from now on, I'm going to be the one to protect you. He cut off all of Kaio Akairo's steel spider, surprising Kaio Akairo. Everyone rushed inside and saw that Teo was wearing a war ring. Teo says hello to big bro Kaio Akairo as a family member. Matsumi ran to hug Teo. Futaba walked over and said, Too bad for you, Kaio Akairo. But there's no time to be melancholy. You've got to teach that kid. 